Hey guys, Sunny here. So if you're new to my channel, I am a professional ballroom dancer, which means I've competed and performed from the newcomer amateur all the way to the professional championship level divisions nationally and around the world. And I've previously owned the largest ballroom dance studio in the country for over 15 years. So I am here today to share with you kind of an industry insider's perspective on the ballroom dance world. And today I'd love to share 10 commonly held myths that may be holding back your ballroom dancing, okay? So, um, number one myth. The more I practice, the better I'll get. Busted! Mm, this couldn't be less true. No, the more you practice, um, practice makes predictable, not perfect. Okay, so practice is somewhat useless if you're not getting enough lessons in between your practices. And you could, in fact, be reinforcing bad habits, okay? So practice doesn't make perfect. Lessons do and practice, okay? Um, and if you want to decrease the cost of your lessons, then practice more. If you're kind of not feeling practicing alone or doing a lot of practice, then take more lessons. Okay, next myth, number two. I have two left feet. I can't learn how to dance. Okay, I've been, dan I've been dancing my whole life. I have never met that student. As a matter of fact, some of the best students I've had have come in to me, say, for a wedding dance, um claiming they have two left feet, they're terrified, and they end, end up being actually extraordinarily talented. I've even had a couple like that come in and eventually compete successfully. So no, you don't have two left feet unless you have an orthopedic issue. And, and if you got, literally have two left feet, then, you know, I don't know, that would probably affect things, but I doubt you do. Okay, next myth. I'm too chubby to dance. Bull roar doesn't happen. Um, as long as I have been in the dance industry, it has been very inclusive of human beings of all body types. This includes in competition, okay? Um, you're going to see all ages, all body types. Now, does it help athletically if you're not chubby? Yes, okay, you know, and it's certainly less impact on your joints. But I have seen many beautiful dancers, amateur and even pro, though not competing professionally, but teachers who are, um, I'm sure, medically overweight, but beautiful dancers. And ladies, being light has nothing to do with your weight. It has to do with your horizontal movement across the floor, but I can get to that in other videos. Okay, number uh, four myth. Flashy figures look cooler. Oh, busted. No, they don't. Flashy figures look like trashy figures when they're done poorly. I guarantee beautifully executed with good technique, bronze figures look worlds better than the flashiest figures where we're throwing ourselves around the floor. It looks like two um, out of control baby giraffes. Don't do it in competition, even in social dancing. And newsflash leads do not lead your lady in fancy figures when you're social dancing. If I wanted to be impressed, I would show up to a private lesson. You're not impressing me. What I would love to feel is easy to follow, smooth movement, where I don't feel like you're using me to show off, but we're just enjoying dancing and I'm not feeling all this pressure to follow all these fancy moves. Hey, it would be even better if we could um, dance so casually, not poorly, just easy figures, so we can actually have a conversation while you're dancing. Novel concept. There is a social element to social dance, okay? Um, okay. Myth number five, the perfect dance partner exists. Pfft. No, it doesn't for no one. No one on this planet has a perfect partner. We are different skill levels. We are different heights. We are different body types. We're different personalities. We like to do different things. One person might love doing Latin. The other loves doing ballroom. And often we do need to make compromises. I, I can't even say often. You will have to make compromises when finding a partner. And by the way, biggest mistake I see, especially from ladies, is 
my partner has to be as good as I am. So newsflash for you ladies, you're not as good as you think you are. And B, you're gonna die without a dance partner unless you have realistic expectations. And honestly, someone's skill level doesn't matter. I can make anyone a good dancer with private lessons. Um, and no, it's not gonna take 10 years to catch up if you've been dancing 10 years. Um, so um, be forgiving in what your partner has to bring to the table, okay? Okay, number seven, myth. I need a partner to ballroom dance. No, you don't. That's what they have Prime for. So Prime is what you see on Dancing with the Stars, what you saw on Dancing Queens. This is when you dance with a pro. And newsflash, social dancing. We all dance with each other. So your studio, and I'm sure somewhere in your town, offers public ballroom dance parties where you can go and just slap the boards with other people that are ballroom dance enthusiasts. In fact, it is poor etiquette to say no when someone asks you to dance. These people aren't there just to dance with their dance partner. If they only want to dance with their partner, they'll show up just to their private lessons and their office party, okay? Um, but anyone that goes to social dances really enjoys dancing and enjoys dancing with other people of a variety of skill levels. Now, the salsa community is a little bit different. They tend to be more stratified and only want to social dance with people of their skill level. But ballroom and Latin, very forgiving of skill level. If you're intimidated, just if you ask someone to dance, say, hey, you know, I, I haven't been dancing that long. Is that okay? Of course, they're going to say yes. But if you feel a need to put a caveat on your dance experience before leading them around the floor, that's fine. Okay, same thing ladies, if someone asks you to dance and you're afraid you won't be able to follow, say, hey, I haven't learned this dance before, is that okay? Or, you know, I'm not very experienced, I hope that's okay. Um, it's going to be okay, okay? Um, okay, myth number seven. It's my partner's fault. Well, busted, no it's not. Dancing is a two-way street. Okay, so um, ladies, I am a co-pilot. I am not a 500-pound passenger sitting on a horse's back, okay? So we both have our parts to do. And um, ladies are particularly prone to doing this, blaming their partner. And um, ladies, I can tell you, I as a professional dancer can do a heck of a lot to make my lead feel better and encourage him to lead correctly. So ladies, go into your lessons with an open mind. Um, ladies, I do post weekly um, ballroom dance technique videos that'll give you some helpful hints on what you can do to be a lighter follow and help encourage your lead so they feel your center and are able to lead you correctly. Okay. If you're not centered to him correctly, he can't feel you. So of course he's going to jack you around the floor. So um, everyone should take ownership in their half of the partnership. Even championship level pros argue and often blame their their pro partner. And my suggestion when you get in a pickle like this in your private in your practice time in a social dance, just drop it and move on to another figure. Or um, this is kind of fun. Switch roles. So men, you follow, ladies, you lead, and suddenly you'll develop an instantaneous um, empathy for what your partner's part is. So very easy to throw stones, not easy to do their part. We've all got a heavy burden to carry there and we're all doing our best, okay? Okay, next myth, number eight. I'm too old to ballroom dance. Okay, this is similar to the weight myth. Not true. Um, ballroom dancing in the entirety of my ballroom dance career has been all inclusive for all ages, okay? Um, and in fact, you'll find a 20 year old that'll be just as happy asking a 90 year old to dance at a social dance as they are another 20 year old, okay? So social dancing is not a meat market. Ballroom dancing is not a meat market. Many people do meet their spouses there, but it's truly about human beings that also enjoy ballroom and Latin dancing, okay? So do not let age hold you back, okay? Um, anyone can learn to dance, okay? Anyone can improve their flexibility, um, how light they are to follow, how good of a lead they are, regardless of age. I promise you that, okay? Okay, myth number nine. I can teach myself to dance. Okay, bad news bears. YouTube videos are only gonna get you so far. Um, now certainly, YouTube videos, whether you're watching the pro couples or especially if you're watching like a technique video, like the ones I post each week, um, you can supplement 
your private lessons or in your social dance experiences, um, your group classes with information from those because at that point, you have a common language. You understand what going diagonal wall is. If you don't, you see the person do it in the video. They just, that teacher presenting a technique video will often, as I do, describe, show you here's good, here's bad. So if you don't understand the technical lingo, you can see it, okay? In a private lesson where you're actually dancing with someone or even a group class setting, um, you're getting individual feedback because the feedback I have for each couple is gonna be quite different. One couple and person might have an amazing natural top line. The other has a totally amazing music musicality. Um, the other has a fantastic natural standing leg action. And so that information is going to be custom tailored to you to learn the fastest. And if you're, if you're just watching other couples and learning from their videos, bad idea. Okay. Every couple dances differently. Every couple, um, they're achieving movement at these elite levels of ballroom dance from a very different body connection then you're probably grasping. If you just mimic the top, it's gonna look um, really um, unbalanced and aesthetically displeasing to look at and not feel good for your partner either, okay? Okay, myth number 10. Sorry guys, I know I'm pushing that, that 10 minute mark. Um, women are not as good of teachers as men. Now, certainly this can be the case. And if the very first lady teacher you take with is not as good, you're probably gonna make an assumption about all lady teachers. Um, and there are many teachers that are not good out there, both male and female guys, okay? Um, the downside or the upside as the case may be is a lady is not physically huge. She's not gonna be as powerful as a man. So if the man is not that good of a teacher, at least he's gonna know his part and be able to drag the lady through it. And this lady, I can learn like that because of the nature of following. However, most lady pros know the man and lady's part. Even better than the man knows the man and lady's part, although he'll probably know the man's part a little better, lady probably know the lead's part a little better, but in my experience, the pro championship level ladies who know the man and lady's part are stunningly amazing, good teachers. Personal story, my favorite three pros, as well as my male pro partner, my first one, were all the same. And guess what? All three ladies. So, you know what? I don't usually um, individually name people here, but I'm not shaming anyone. I'm giving a shout out because they're amazing ladies. I'm going to share their names with you now. So, number one, Katusha Demidova. So this was one of my primary coaches. She and her partner were where I took the mass majority of my lessons. But I also had amazing experiences with Diana McDonald. She's not everyone's cup of tea in terms of personality, but I loved her. Not only her personality, but especially the results I got from those lessons. Incredible teacher, incredible lead, incredible follow. Amazing results. Number three, Yeva Pauksina. So she's another um, world finalist, incredible teacher, guys. Um, amazing lead, amazing follow. Um, and honestly, compared to the men, the ladies just are naturally gonna have more flexibility. So they can actually show us both parts. Now the male teacher might have an incredible fundamental understanding of the lady's shape and connection and where that's coming from. But it's very difficult for him to physically mimic it when they're so top weighted in terms of their um, muscle um, placement versus a lady. Um, and also they're just, because of all those muscles, be much less flexible. So they can't really show you um, a full extension like a lady. Now, if you just learn verbally, that really doesn't matter. But most people I find benefit from learning with words and with physically being manipulated through the figure and visually being shown the figure, okay? So, um, myth busted. So I hope that's been helpful, guys. Oh my gosh, I'm almost at 15 minutes. I apologize. So I will see you tomorrow. I hope that's been helpful. Um, if there are other myths you can think of, definitely comment below or anything here you found to be surprising. I'd love to hear that. Um, I'm not monetized. I just do this because I love seeing your... Thumbs up button. Love it. Makes my day. 
Um, I love when I see a subscription. New YouTube notifies me for every single one. I get so excited when I get a new subscriber. So uh, please throw me a bone, thumbs up, subscribe. And I love comments too, especially questions, because um, I think many of the most popular videos I've shared have been just in response to viewers' questions or comments about other videos I've posted. So have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon. Hope you like that. Bye.